Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome to a live episode of Honest Trailer Commentaries, coming to you from our bedroom because the toilet's done broke in the office. So here we are. They're doing some plumbing work. Uh, we'll be back next week in person. We I'm sure. We we could have theoretically done. We don't. I, I we're not in the toilets that much. I feel like we could have gone in. <laughs> I could have relieved myself anyway. in the, the empty can of Morpheus G fuel. I definitely it's, could have. <laughs> yeah, it's just that nobody else is there. Like, that's really <laughs> like the, the toilets are sort of second. Fair, fair enough. Uh, but today we're talking about Ahsoka. <laughs> um, we're going to watch a trailer together. Speaking of, speaking of toilets. Speaking of, of cisterns full of crap. Um, yeah, we're going to. Sorry, uh, everybody. I know you <laughs> liked it. I'm sorry. Did they? Well, we didn't. Some um, people did. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to watch the trailer. We'll show you some outtakes. Uh, we'll do some Q&A. Ahsoka Defenders, rise up. Tell us what we missed. Uh, the Clone don't. Wars is probably what we missed. Um, and then we'll tease I've you seen most next week's Clone trailer. Wars. Rebels. I haven't seen a lot of Rebels. I've seen a lot of that Clone Wars show. Okay. Uh, well, then let's let's just dive right in. Uh, you know the drill. Um, yo, Ahsoka Asukta is what I have to say about that. <laughs> I love we're bringing that we're really bringing that strong Mad Magazine seventies energy to this one. Yeah, did you know actually? Um, Australian commentaries is a fold in if you actually <laughs> if, you, if you push your screen together. There's a funny gag. Um, yeah, I didn't like this one bit, um, and I don't think that it was even um, conceptually or plot wise. Though that had its issues, I will forgive like a bare bones, straightforward like. Like we said, light side versus dark side, throw around the lightsabers, the deck swings, the TIE fighters. But that's committing to, I think, being a action adventure show or an action adventure franchise. And when the fight choreo and the set pieces are dull as dirt and they just look like you are dancing, basically, like it's it does not look like there was any intent to hurt, kill or maim during any of the lightsaber duels. Uh, it's like, yeah. OK, I'm going to spin around and then we're going to touch together like this and then I, we're going to touch together like that. And then, like, the set pieces of her, like, flipping around on the outside of a spaceship, just nothing was visually impressive, which then makes the dialogue and the story and the characterization stand out even more in a bad way. That's just one man's opinion. Lon, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I sadly, I don't have that contrasting of opinion. I, I agree with everything you said, but I, I think to me, it's it's like, look, I... I think it's weird that we're basing so much of Star Wars on these Cartoon Network shows. But you know what? Fair enough. Like, if that's the creative decision, okay, I can get on board with just about anything. I like Star Wars. But you have to bring me in. Like, e even if I'm not a Rebels fan, if you're going to re-pivot the whole universe around these characters and this time period and this, like, okay, but sell me on it. You know, like, make a show that shows me here's why Sabine Wren and here's why Ezra Bridger and here's like what's compelling about them and why you want to follow their take on this world. And I think that that's what this show really had an opportunity to do and then does not do. If you're not already sold on these characters and their journey, he's not giving you anything new here to grab onto that's exciting, that stands out. In fact, uh, of all of the characters we're introduced to or, you know, introduced to or that are that work into the show, the the villains are far more compelling. Balin Skull and Shin Hadi are much better characters with much more that makes them interesting and compelling here. Ahsoka Tana, like, I, uh. well, Rosario Dawson's been good in other stuff, but man, they're giving us so little. They're, they're just monologuing and they're speaking in flat monotone. It's almost all exposition dialogue or like, David Tennant rehashing stuff that happened in the cartoon to us. Like, it's just not a fun, fast paced, exciting, funny, charismatic world. And that's what Star Wars is all about on a very fundamental level. You're here. Um, let's uh, let's dive right in. I think we're going to have more to say as we watch. <laughs> Probably. In a franchise with zero new ideas. Okay, one new idea. Star Wars will stop drawing from the classics in favor of those cartoons that came on after Ben 10. Has your oh. taste matured since then? No? I want to stop here because this is a fascinating behind the scenes thing. So I wrote an early version of that joke, but I put the show that came on after Gravity Falls, which is true. Like I looked it up, like what show did came on at, before Rebels on, on Disney XD? 
you changed it to Ben 10. I'm not, I'm not against it. I'm just curious as to your thought process of why Ben 10 over Gravity Falls. That's interesting because I also went back through the, um, you know, the old schedules of Cartoon Network and oh, stuff like so that. Oh, so we just looked at different times. We years. just looked at different years, I think. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Also, I was more familiar with Ben 10 and Gravity Falls. I, I guess I confused that with Steven Universe or something like that because I was, I looked up Gravity Falls and I don't know. I just felt more comfortable with Ben 10 because I haven't seen Fair enough Gravity oh, Falls. Oh, I like Gravity Falls. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, oh, but God. Yeah, they, they, yeah it's, one of, it, it's one of these. It does have that <laughs> Steven Universe, like that art. Yeah, I was going to say the, that art style. Yeah, yeah. Kind of similar, yeah. I mean, they all, um, all those Cartoon Network shows, they all kind of Disney XD Cartoon Network from that era, they all kind of looked like that. Yeah, the CalArts smile, right? Yeah, the, yeah. That's they what all they got that. that. Um, anyways, yeah, this uh, it's just some interesting programming notes. But yeah, I just like it's, it's interesting that we we went like slightly different variations. There were like three different Ben 10 shows and they were all right. in that same era. There was a lot of overlap there. So, um Fair let enough. us know what you watched um Yeah, what so, came on what, uh, came what, on what do you associate before Rebels? With, yeah, and the in the programming block with Rebels. Yeah. Uh all right, keep going. All right then. Who wants to see some lightsaber tricks? inevitable ahsoka get ready for a no bs back to basic star wars adventure light sides and dark sides x-wings and tie fighters and cute droids and aliens begging for the sweet release of merch click the shop tab to learn more but what <laughs> really makes ahsoka i've never seen that before is this just disney plus that there is a store on the same page as uh, yeah, where uh, you press play a lot of them are starting up like store kind of concepts, but Disney by far the most aggressive in terms of when you go to the show page, they're like, Hey, wow. while you're here, buy some stuff. And like and Loki season two with the McDonald's stuff is really, have you been watching it? No. Uh, so episode two is largely set at a seventies McDonald's. And they <laughs> it's a bottle cutting, episode. <laughs> and they keep cutting back to Owen Wilson, whose dialogue is just purely how much he loves McDonald. Like the whole character is in the episode to be like, oh my God, this burger is amazing. I, this food is so good. Like, it's crazy. It's just a wow. half hour McDonald's commercial. Anyway. I was checking out the, uh, yeah, I'm on the shop now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. They have the droid, but not the cat. And that seems like a huge oversight to me. Yeah. Loath cat, they called it. They yeah. don't even give it, they didn't even give it an alien name. They just added an alien word in front of the word cat. So I, I it's a space I, cat. I wonder if anyone got fired for that blunder, but it's kind of it's, I mean, that's crazy to me that like those things were clearly designed to be plushes. And yeah, they uh, had them in multiple episodes, even like Ahsoka, when she goes to Sabine's place, finds the cat there. You're like, oh, they're bringing it back multiple times. They, they've definitely got merch ideas here. I yeah. mean, maybe that'll be like phase two. You know, there's always multiple waves of merch phases. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, keep going. I'm going to find a, a toy for Lon. Feel like the George Lucas original recipe toys. is some of the worst dialogue since I don't like sand. Don't worry about me. I'm not. Good. Should I be? What? Worried. Nope. Uh. I'm joking. You're joking. Yeah, I'm joking. How can you joke at a time like this? What would you prefer? I don't know. You want me to be more serious? I prefer it. Stop. I burned my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. Hey, that was from Andor. You're right. I just wish she had changed a little. That's so good. Uh, okay, like pause. Trying I mean, th this to me is Dave Filoni's Achilles heel and, and also what makes him so similar to George Lucas is he he's like it's like that Garth Marenghi uh quote where it's like I know writers who use subtext they're all cowards <laughs> yeah like he's writing these things like Book of Boba Fett and this like they are quests in an RPG like yeah. he doesn't and JJ Abrams really I guess that's just been Star Wars for a while is they can't get beyond get the thing to find the thing to get the thing to find the guy like that's really what the plot boils down to and there's right. no they, and they just all they know how to do is just walk into frame and say it 
and say what they want and say what they're looking that's, for think, and then walk yeah. off screen. I think that's because it's, it's not only plot stuff that they treat that way, it's it's everything. Uh, so, you know, if a character is sad, they'll walk in the room and they'll just be like, what's I just, wrong? I just I'm feel sad. So, I just feel Why? so upset, you know, like <laughs> yeah. they, they, everything is just very superficial and very uh, on the surface and very transparent. And, and that's what I'm saying, like even down to the characterization, which makes them impossible to 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 latch on to his people because they're they only exist to be like moving pieces on this board and and they're they're you know they're they're going around i i think mary elizabeth winstead is so good and charismatic and other stuff and they've just got her literally just going places and saying things out loud that need to be said to move the story along she has no there's no like characterization to that entire world that entire part of the story she literally just goes and says like you're not paying attention. This is important. And we got to go do this. And that, that's what, that's what, you know, Ezra would want. Like, what is this? This is, I guess that's what like the, the five seasons of, of television of, of the Clone Wars and Rebels is there to do, but come on, man, like, that's it. That's well, all you're I mean, th that like, sure. After you follow characters for six, seven seasons, you feel an affinity for them. And and you can't replace that in like three episodes and no one is saying that you can, but you got to give us something. You, you can't just give us nothing and say, well, but watch that cartoon. That's where the characterization is. It has to come through or there's no point to what you're to the new thing you're making. You're just making an, an extender to the story, but you're not telling us anything new. You're not making a new narrative. There's no like. There's no like B story, you know, like TV shows usually have A and B stories and they have similar, like the B story reflects in some way the A story, you know, like a character has you an internal dilemma they've yeah. got to work out while they're figuring out their external dilemma. This is this is the, the very, very foundational basics of storytelling. And they don't really do it. And you're like, what what is Ahsoka even working through in this series? Like what what is her internal conflict because we have that episode where anakin she's in an, a dream for an entire episode where anakin is going to teach her a lesson but what is the lesson like the whole i episode, think it's like, like learn to work with sabine again but i guess like, i don't really put i, I couldn't really parse on, it yeah like what is he trying to teach fight you gotta fight <laughs> it feels like you say like you have to fight like you can't give up you have to fight which is not a really Jedi lesson anyway. Like Luke wins by not fighting. Well, and not something Ahsoka's ever seemed to struggle with. Like she, right? She already walked away, I, I and don't... she was already working with Sabine. I don't know. It's it doesn't um, mean, right. That's they what don't I mean. care. So it, it's like that's how that's just what a story is. And if you're not willing to commit on that level, then all you're really doing is adding an epilogue to the thing you already made. Yeah, feels bad, man. Uh, okay, keep playing. <laughs> The E. Tony the Tiger? No, it's Ahsoka Tano, a compelling character, as long as you don't count her first movie. You're stuck with me, Sky Guy. <laughs> what did you just call me? Or this entire show. All right, then. Watch her cross her arms and monotone every word. Tell me what's going on. And fight like someone who's afraid her tentacles will fly off if she moves too fast. This absolute charisma hole will meet her match in Sabine Wren, a rebel straight out of rebellious characters incorporated, complete with purple hair, speeder bike, and dual Jedi Mandalorian backstories like some kind of pirate ninja. Alone, they're boring. Together, they'll have the chemistry you'd expect of two ex co workers on a road trip that will have fans everywhere wondering which one of them can sigh more. <laughs> the student <Us>. has become <laughs> the master it's a bad sign when that's still the vibe five episodes in that they're just sighing at just the, the fact that they have to be together in each other's presence like the love is gone guys break up it's not yeah. it's not happening but it's also just like well that's how you signal exasperation when you're feeling it uh, like it's just, <laughs> it, it, everything is just that that level you know there's no like nothing is subtextual in this entire show it's just like another adventure yeah it's told exclusively through Fortnite emotes yeah. <laughs> it's just like select sigh from the wheel and then, and then move to the next scene yeah. oh well <sighs> okay keep going the student has become the master 
Long ago, in a galaxy that's surprisingly clean now, our heroes must stop the bad guys from building a portal to all the garbage hanging out in the Star Wars Extended Universe. To do that, they must boldly... <laughs> I just want to shout out the, um, the, the Jedi hut uh that that's in the eu um i really hope we get to see that in live action someday of uh, someone java sized holding a lightsaber i mean at this point we're going to get to see everything you could possibly want to see that involves any species involved in the original movies right they're gonna at, at, at some point we're going to get remixes of everything i have to imagine right my favorite eu story is the one of the um the uh i forget the name of the droid the one that uh that Uncle Ben's about to buy, but he explodes. Right. Yeah. And it turns out that that was like a Jedi droid oh that like wow. sacrificed themselves yeah. so that R two D two could could meet Luke Skywalker. Sure. Um, many many lives were lost to bring you to bring you Star Wars. And many that was many Bothans died. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when you see now New Hope, that droid explodes. Um, it was like a monk setting himself on fire. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. so, now now know. we know. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Only solve a bunch of stupid puzzles. Find the key. Looking for a key, okay? Crack the code. Unlock the mini Pause. map. And fast travel. <laughs> I'm sorry. That that code that she cracks. Um, it's they they make a big... like an uncharted video <laughs> they, game like they make early, a one of the early do... uncharted temples not even one of the later more difficult ones they make a big thing out of like yeah sabine use your skills in art to, <laughs> to try to figure this one out and it's like a rubik's cube with one move left it's like the lines don't yeah. line up and she rotates it so that the lines line yeah, up it, it's, it's like, like there's like a pattern on the floor and it's like <laughs> make make this match that like that that's the first thing you'd try. Like, it's... <laughs> I see that this spins and the lines are a little askew. Yeah. What if I line them? No, yeah. no. Not going to make get... them do math or anything? No, nothing? All right. Tap in the expert. Um, yeah. Anyways, that was particularly it's dumb. It's very silly. And, and it's like, what? Like, I the whole... Like, they never... They're, Star Wars in general is bad at this. Like, establishing, like, this complicated map to the key to the co coordinates to solve this thing. Who like set this up? Like somebody had to like put this in order. Like, oh, I'm gonna make a little map room, and then I'll make this little globe to light. And like to, it's all just like so for Thrawn, yeah. Like, so it was just follow... like a place where they dumped them. They had just exiled. Yeah, like them there. what? Like why do directions to the like why is Thrawn hanging out in the place, the one place where directions exist to go? <laughs> and like it just, it's all crazy. <laughs> don't think too hard about it. Uh, let's keep going. No, you definitely don't want to. Think. Unlock the mini-map and fast travel to the whale point. Intergalactic travel within a star whale. No, I really have done it all. To rescue their buddy's space Jesus. Do you think? No. The Force is my ally. Across eight episodes that are light on story by TV standards, but just enough to fill an RPG fetch quest. Oh, cool. They unlock the Blade of Talzin. Does the damage scale with strength or dex? Finally, gaze upon live-action Thrawn and his live-action dad gut. Also, does the Empire not have a tailor? What's going on here? Grant Smurf Tarkin over here is the heir to the <laughs> Empire with a plan to raise an army slightly less dangerous than butter. I, all right, we have, we, have to, we have to pause here. I got a, I got a lot of thoughts. <laughs> Stormtroopers already act like zombies. We, we can't see their faces. They sort of lurch around. around. Yeah. They're individually not very dangerous, but if you're up against enough of them, they can be a threat. Like they, there, there's no need to make them zombie. Like doing making them zombies doesn't do anything extra. You can't even see their faces. They're like <laughs> we get a little green glow behind their visor. It's the dumbest thing. That's not. There's nothing extra cool about a zombie stormtrooper. Are they going to eat them? Yeah. What? Yeah. What happens? They already act like zombies. They're, they can't bite you. <laughs> I. That was. I, I mean, we made me like angry. That was so like. Very, very rarely are things dumb enough to make me mad. Like, that was so dumb. I was like, now I'm upset. It must and be a cartoon thing because people were excited about it. They were excited well, about it, seeing it. They're, they're, it, it, it. It does feel a little like Malibu Stacy gets a new hat with this stuff. Like, <laughs> every show, it's like new sword toy, new kind of stormtrooper. Like, it's so formulaic at this point. We just did this in Mandalorian, remember? Like, he got... The dark saber, which is a sure. new kind of lightsaber, and then he got the the 
death troopers or whatever, those like robot hard to kill stormtrooper guys. So we're just different flaming sword, different kind of new stormtrooper. Like, come on, man, get a new bit. Yeah, this was Boring. Thrawn's this was Thrawn's plan, I guess, with the witches. It was to come back to the galaxy with like one ship full of bumbling, less effective stormtroopers Ooh. against like the entire like the Rebel Alliance won, by the way. Like they're they're fine. I think they can handle this. Like they don't need to call in the backup, the Jedi. Where call Luke. We have a re- we have a worse stormtrooper coming yeah, at us. Yeah, I mean, I guess like you could just endlessly like keep bringing him back, but it, it definitely feels like diminishing returns on this stuff. Like how many times are you going to bring a dead stormtrooper? They weren't good at fighting the first time when they were alive. <laughs> how many times are you going to resurrect? It just it's all kind of just silly at this point. And, and and silly is fine, but like irredeemably silly. All right, keep going. But to do that, he must team up with Morgan the Space Witch to hang on. They have space witches now. You're a witch. An ancient people from a distant galaxy. Okay, so not witches, just ancient aliens. Witchcraft. More witches. So, witches. My people were among the first to harness and ride the creatures in the days before time was counted. Okay, you win. I stopped caring. Plus, bringing some small shred of light to the dark so, side pause. is... I will say, somebody reminded me uh, in the comments this morning that there was a witch-like group uh, in um, Battle for Endor. <laughs> Mm, yes, <laughs> that, yeah, that's that attacked Wilford Brimley and the village or something. Are they? Is that tied in? I wonder if that's canonical. That would be cool. These are the same witches, the witches of <laughs> Dathomir or whatever. Maybe. Yeah, I would. I would clap like a seal if, if um, you know, the ghost of Wilford Brimley came back to fight the witches. Yeah, uh, if, if you're gonna riff on any classic Star Wars, you should really make it those Ewok spinoff movies. I, I mean, that was dark. They they really slaughtered. That's like something out of Andor. Like they they slaughtered that kid's village. They, they have fully wow. orphaned that child an, at, right an at the beginning. Andor, an Andor, like a tonally Andor series about Ewoks. I would watch that. That oh, should yeah. be what Tony Gilroy moves on to next. <laughs> okay, keep going. Balin Skull and the little sister he picked up along the way. Your ambition drives you in one direction take your place in the coming empire and wanders around resigned to his fate speaking for the star wars fans trapped watching the same old drag it repeats again and again and again yeah pause i mean extend r.i.p to to one of the goats uh they were the only piece i mean you said it already they're the only piece i'd like to see pop up somewhere else of this entire show i don't care about thrawn um, that they did, no. they really fumbled the ball on that one. He's supposed to be this menacing, intimidating master strategist. He seems dumb and and not good. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it looks so much like Elon Musk, but blue. It really is distracting <laughs> me the whole time how much he looked like Elon. Yeah, but I did like them. I, I I wish that we were following around like a mercenary former Jedi and his and his. Uh... Why can't that just be like the show? Like he obviously has some ideas for things <laughs> he'd like to do that we don't really ever get any insight into. Like make that the show. Like obviously, R.I.P. Ray Stevenson. They didn't know he wouldn't be around for the long haul. But I like that's such a more interesting and original story than like find the map to the key to go find our friend and like that's, that's a the good end. character like what yeah. is this guy's motivations i'm curious i would like to know more i i would like to i want to ask questions about his backstory and not have them just presented to me or in a flashback or answered immediately right. like a different journey than the like the Jedi has a lesson to learn about humility or whatever that we've seen play out a hundred thousand times, you know, like every one of the like I like Star Wars visions that animated anthology series they do. I really yeah. like them, but you could tell like those are designed with like what's a very basic kind of Star Wars story that we could use because the point is the animation, the style, the you know, but like in this, you've got eight hour long episodes. You don't have to just go for like the most generic core basic kind of story. You can get creative and thoughtful. Yeah. Well, next time, next uh, time. keep going. Your big red sabers for the return of Anakin Skywalker. Hayden Christensen is back. All right, and eerily really smoother than ever. <laughs> to play Ghost Dad to Ahsoka in an extremely orange flashback. I don't know this battle. His redemption arc is finally complete. Not because he apologized for being Space Hitler. No, it's just enough time has passed that we're happy to see him again. Nope, nope, sorry, still can't do it. I hope Ghost Wado beats him with a shoe. Bye. Pause. 
<laughs> Look, I know that there's a lot of the prequels have had this whole second resurgence and stuff like that. Um, I was there the first time and I didn't like it the first time. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like, I was I, there, Kendall. I was there <laughs> 3,000 years ago. I was 13 when the first one came out. It wasn't like I was a like jaded by then, thank God. But like I watched, I was like, well, the pod racing was cool. Like I, Darth Maul was cool. But yeah, you know, I, I I liked the original trilogy. I had I'd seen that a bunch of times on VHS, but by the second one, I was out. I've I've not liked the prequels since number two and number three was like, okay, a little better, but they just never the appeal and the nostalgia for that is just non-existent for me. I'm sorry. It's just not there. Yeah, it's definitely an, an age thing for us. Like we if you were if you were a kid and that was your Star Wars growing up, now you're nostalgic for it. And and, and like honestly, that makes perfect sense. And even the the grand felony project, which seems to be like, you know, going back and kind of tinkering with the storytelling in the prequels to sort of bring it more in line with everything else. Like I, I get that. I'm fine with that. I think I, it's just it's just execution. It's just execution wise, I don't think. They're doing a good job of really fleshing out these stories and making these characters people I want to follow around for adventure. But I didn't feel that way about the prequels. And in a sense, they're if you like the prequels, you didn't? They, I kind of did. They, they are giving you they're 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 giving you more of what you like if what you like is Attack of the Clones. Like they're giving you that same style of stilted dialogue and and characterization that you got, where people just walk in, say what's what they're feeling and what they want, and then. And then on to another meeting scene. <laughs> like that's sure, that's the I mean, show. I will say, I think the the movie prequels do. It does feel more like like I, th there's more to latch onto their character wise. I think like I I really like their their take on Palpatine and McDermott's doing a great job. You've got Liam Neeson, you've got Samuel L. Jackson. You know, like I like Hayden Port Christensen and Natalie Portman's romance is very stilted. Like not all of it works, but there's enough personality and and, and injections of like a Star Warsy kind of vibe. I mean, I we talk about Watto all the time. I talk about Dexter Jetster all the time. Like that stuff feels Star Wars to me. There isn't enough of that in Ahsoka. Like that personality. Ahsoka is very dry compared to the prequels. Even the prequels at their most sort of severe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if it works for you, God bless. Um, you're you're getting <laughs> what you asked for and what you want. Um, yeah. I'm not here to judge. Just just one man's opinion. Uh, all right. Keep going. I mean, this is like. Ahsoka's like if the, the all the prequels were like those scenes in the Jedi Council in the prequels, where it's like very <laughs> formal and kind of stilted and boring, and everybody's just having a meeting. This yeah. is this is just that for eight episodes. <laughs> a lot of meet, a lot of space meetings, too many space a lot meetings. Of meetups. Yeah. And then one time there's a space meeting, and C three PO shows up. Like that's gonna, it's like, but it's still a meeting. Like I yes, like <laughs> I I love this old robot guy. You got Anthony Daniels some work, great job. But like. You could have him do something that's not go to a meeting. <laughs> He's basically like someone's executive, Leia's executive assistant saying, yeah. it, it's yeah. going to be 10 more minutes. He folks. literally is. He'd be like, <laughs> oh, I have a message from Jen. We're supposed to be excited about that. Like, And the message is, you're uh, wait here. It's not going to happen today. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> I mean, he's a protocol droid, so it makes sense. But come on. All right, keep going. Pretend the last decade never happened and wrap yourself in a comforting blanket of 2014 nostalgia. Just a little rusty. For a show that's giving out more fan service than a sex worker at Celebration. The night sisters of Daphne. Three pier. Honored Chancellor. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I hated that. Jason uh, has that. abilities. His father, Kanan Jackson. I hated that little Keebler elf. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Until it's clear this <laughs> franchise stalled out years ago and has been slowly rotting in the belly of a sarlacc of its own creation. Who wants to see some more lightsaber tricks, huh? I did like that Black Knight guy. It's just like, yeah. we just have knights in space straight up. <laughs> Wee! Dunes. <laughs> Starring. Dawson's Creed, Ren and Snippy, Dr. Screw, Twilight, Breaking Thrawn, Punisher, Star Wars Own, Anya Taylor Misery, which better have my map key, Beards Do Not Grow in Space, <laughs> Any Given Sunday. Glad we got that in. Once yeah. in a blue uh, pause. I mean, if you know, 
go watch the state right um yeah is it called uh, beards in space or is it called no it's called else? the bearded men of space station 11 <laughs> yeah, okay, thank, you. thank you thank you for reminding uh, yeah me. you type in the bearded men of space station 11 you'll you'll probably <laughs> find it I would imagine. one of those things that goes on too long uh, and then keeps going you? until until it's funny again. Yeah, it's a um, hilarious uh, sketch from a, a classic MTV comedy show called The State. Yeah, beards don't grow in space. Beards <laughs> do not grow in space, but 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 I have, I a, have beard. a beard. <laughs> then you're an alien. <laughs> right, keep going. And, and so Dune, chivalry is dead. R two D's nuts. Orange man, good. Yamon, nine clinch <laughs> snails. An actual ah. coven of chaos. And a perfect metaphor for Disney's Star Wars. This shambling. Star Wars. Rains. Jumping the whale. <laughs> oh, right. Because he turns into Darth Vader. That's like poetry. Good. So if they rhyme. Good call. <laughs> yeah. Very, very cool. Very cool. subtle. Yeah. Oh, where do they go from here, Lon? Oh, wait, well, where do we go from here? For here, uh, we have other things uh, happening. Um, check out uh, Spider-Man Goes to Therapy on this channel, um, where we got a real psychologist to break down Peter Parker's psyche, uh, among other things. And um, But isn't being traumatized a canon event? Can he undo that without worse things happening to the multiverse? Click folks? somewhere around here to know more. Um, uh, click like and subscribe and the bell uh, so you won't miss another thing. Um, God, yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's let's run through the outtakes and get to the Q and A because uh, we we got a lot to dig into still. <laughs> Starring Super Soka, Auntie Social, Beat Saber, the Knights of Ren, the Mandalorian, no, the other one, Pada Wine, David Tennant, Ramona Powers, Twilight, New Moons, Ray Gun Stevenson, the Hottie and the Naughty. Sad sack. Game of Thrones did it better. Save me, Space Jeebus. Ghost Dad. <laughs> Star Wars Visions. Exile on Pain Street. Dad's Mickelson. Oh, Cheesy Danish. Mace Wind Up. The Dwarf well, Time Express. <laughs> Go off, X King. The Mothma Prophecies. Wrong kid died. Space Camp. Weird Sisters. Hocus Ahsokas. Celebrity Apprentice, Dawson's Week, Guardians of Two Galaxies, Star Wars: A New Mo. <laughs> Very Mad Magazine. Very Mad Magazine. Very Mad Magazine. Galaxies. Oh, Mom, come on! Kathleen Kennedy said I could. Help! Help! Ahsoka, hey, you, you hearing any of this? Hello? Get your tentacles out of your ears. That was pretty funny. Kevin noticed that, that there's just a massive rock'em sock'em robot brawl happening against the ship that Ahsoka is in. <laughs> he's like, hey, you want some coffee? Um, he's fine. He's, he's yeah. David Tennant. He'll be fine. He's got he's plot armor. Fine. Also, yeah, we didn't really bring up the fact that they made like a big meal out of like, it's a whole new galaxy. It's who cares? Like it's galaxies the same. have hundreds of millions of <laughs> planets or billions. Of, like galaxies are so vast. It's not like well, we used up this one. We I ran guess. out. Yeah, Ugh, ten <laughs> planets. We keep going to Tatooine over and over again. There's a huge. You got so much to explore. Yeah. No, we got to jump to a whole. And then you go to a whole different galaxy, and it's like, oh, Northern Ireland. Also again. Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the universe we're back on is Iceland. Iceland, is Iceland. <laughs> every planet in the in every galaxy looks like Iceland. Oh boy! All right, I want to I want to jump to this uh, from the Q and A. Um, Friend Zone writes, "What do you think is Star Wars' next move, and what's the next move for the toilet situation?" Well, let's handle those one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet situation is not in our hands. I'm sure we'll get the all clear by the end of the day it's a um, it's a what they just turned off the water they turned the off building. all the water to fit it's a plumbing repair situation right so, so there's that, no that coffee either yeah. it's it's a huge it's no no toilets or coffee it's a yeah. huge problem yeah big issues there so but um luckily not uh not our problem um so <laughs> yeah. we'll keep you posted though we'll keep you posted in graphic detail anyway yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh and, but what do you think is star wars next move i mean I, they don't release the numbers, so it's hard to hard to know. But I can't imagine that they're pleased with. Maybe they think Andor's a bright spot, but do, with the last, I'll say like season of Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and Ahsoka, 
Are they happy with it? Can they just go on like this? Is this Star Wars now? I, I think at some point you got to get movies back into the mix, both because that's how you maximize profits, like theatrical box office, in addition to Disney Plus revenue. But I think that's also like how you renew mainstream interest in the franchise once every few years, you know, like with no Star Wars movies, you're just selling these new shows to pre-existing Star Wars fans. You're not making a new generation of Star Wars fans, I feel like. So long term, I don't think you can take this many years off of making theatrical Star Wars films if you want it to be an ongoing property, you know, like we're, you're in a little danger of, of Indiana Jones happening where it's just, you take too long between entries and the world moves on, you know? And and, and so, yeah, I, to me, it's like, if it's not going to be the Ryan Johnson trilogy and it's not going to be the Taika Waititi thing and Patty Jenkins is moving on, well, they just got to figure out what the next big theatrical Star Wars project is and get going on it. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously the movies, they have to, like it's a movie franchise first and foremost, but I don't think that they need to rush that out. I think if Star Wars disappeared or at least was like at a low hum instead of a, a biannual Disney Plus streaming series, that it would be it would behoove them to go. Look, I know it's unrealistic. Like there was how how long in between um, the original and the prequels? 15 oh, yeah. years. I could have waited. No, it was like it was like, yeah, the mid 80s until the late 90s. So 15, 15 plus almost 20 years. OK, like half a presidential term give us two years that's what i'm and saying that's what i'm saying like start <laughs> now workshopping 2025 2026 relaunch the theatrical films and then one every few years to keep yeah. interest going i think that's i think that's what you got to do and if they're if they're like people didn't like the sequels we don't want to keep going beyond that go back to high republic or yeah. spin it off into something else like i don't think it has to be and as you much know, as I as much as I three. liked Andor, as much as I liked Andor, I, I fully realized that that was like lightning in a bottle. And it's just like Tony Gilroy and the, the those people like decided to make a Star Wars show once. That's not a template for the franchise moving forward. Like, no, I loved it, but I don't no, think but, that they can keep that, make that the tone of Star Wars going forward. Well, no, not not tonally, but in terms of that way of working and producing shows, I mean, that is like we've seen. Post WGA strike, they already came out and they said they're reworking the new Daredevil show and they're going to like, they're doing a whole kind of rethink of Marvel Studios. And, and part of it is in response to they have to change things because of the WGA strike. So part of it is is also like what they're doing is it, is it working and it's making these like bloated, over budget, under satisfying shows. So they've said they're going to stop making as many. And this is for Marvel. This isn't for Star Wars. They're going to stop making as many limited series and focus more on like Loki kind of shows that can go multiple seasons and have more of an episodic flair. Uh, they're going to start having showrunners again. So there's actual like pilots and one person who's sort of vision, like what Tony Gilroy did on Andor. Uh, so I feel like if Disney Plus just adopts that strategy more generally, hopefully we could stop having these problems we chronically have with these Disney Plus shows that we keep talking about, like a lack of direction and a lack of motivation for the characters and it kind of feels like it just starts in the middle and it doesn't have like a clear entry and ending point like a lot of those kind of structural problems you could fix without i agree not everything has to be like tonally like andor but yeah. it more like its own series that stands alone and has its own arcs and beginning middle and end it doesn't necessarily just feel like one little cog in an ongoing story like ahsoka does Right. And yeah, that's the that's the issue. Like uh, Star Wars, even before Marvel was something where it was all interconnected. And you you look at this uh, book or this movie or this TV show and it's all referencing stuff that's happened elsewhere. But when every series on Disney Plus has been save for one third of The Mandalorian has been very bland. I'm not excited to return and keep playing in the same gray universe that, they, yeah. <laughs> that they've I mean, built. It's always a balance. Like, yes, these things are part of this interconnected, larger scale story, but they do they do have to stand on their own merits. And if you look at any entry in Star Wars, Marvel, it's all like that. Like Winter Soldier, people always hold up as like their favorite MCU movie. It's a real movie. It has a structure just like any other conspiracy, thriller, political, thriller, action, adventure, spy movie. It just happens to also tie into this other story. Like, I feel like that's what they kind of lost in a lot of these 
later films and series feel like entries in a larger, like an episode from a larger thing instead of its own story that's coherent and has a beginning and end. And I think that's what they so desperately need to start doing. Well, let's, uh, for the counterpoint, Christopher Brickner says, do you ever feel like, uh, do you ever feel like sometimes your view is the minority? Most people seem to like Ahsoka from all tracking sites while well, and or maybe good, but people don't really talk of it. I'm totally open to that. I mean, I th- it, this got good reviews, like, uh, by, for what it's yeah. worth. Um, this was well I mean, I received think, by critics. I don't think we ever come in. I certainly don't. And say, like, I'm going to tell you what the people like I speak on behalf of the fans or the people or like I it's always these are always just my thoughts folks you could you could take (laughs) them or leave them like I don't I'm not purporting to say this is the mainstream opinion or this is the objective correct opinion this is this is just Lon Harris's thoughts yeah uh so yeah you're you're probably right I think most fans at least it's hard to say from social media because then you're only getting a little sliver of the view but yeah, a lot of the people I follow and was they they like the show a lot. So I I don't mean to say they're they're wrong and I'm right. I mean I think I am, but <laughs> your mileage may vary. Yeah, I mean no, I I think that statistically we are in the minority because this did have a lot of people watching and it had good reviews. So yeah, I guess we did. What, what can you say? Sometimes you don't have to like everything. Um. Well, but I, I, I also think. It's a good thing to bear in mind is like, it, it's hard to say. I mean, you, you never really know, like, objectively, this is popular. This was well liked. This was not like you're always getting a, a cross section of a certain group of fans. And but also. Who cares? Like, it's like in the <laughs> end, it doesn't really matter. It matters what you think. And, and that's it. Like, do, do most fans agree with you? Like, eh, maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Probably good to let that go. Yeah. And I do sit down to, well, everything, but even still Star Wars things like optimistic, like, Ooh, okay. I'm, I'm excited to see what all the fuss is about with Ahsoka. Here we go. Like, wow me. (laughs) And then like, that's what I'm not going in. Like, Hmm. Like, uh, uh, time to, time to blast this pile of garbage. Uh, and it just didn't, it just was underwhelming. That's all. I, I try to go into everything we do on honest trailers with a, with an open mind. If I, if I can't, there, not every movie I go in with a totally open mind. I try. It doesn't always happen. There's that new Kingsman sequel where it's going to be like the rise of Hitler. Like I'm not going into that with an open mind. Like, I think that's terrible, but, uh, but I, I do try when I can. I try to. There you go. Good. There you go. Um, all right. Uh, let's let's do one more. Um, let's see. We already talked about the MCU. Um, let's see. Uh, so Doc Trench says, do you think the reason the prequels are resurgent is that they're thematically consistent and have good action scenes where the Disney sequels are far more mixed? I mean, that's mm. it's kind of hard to get. You're right. To get your hooks into Disney Star Wars just because of. <sighs> the last Jedi um, and, and everything that's happened since. Um, and, but even on TV with, uh, with Andor and, um, and even season one of the Mandalorian, like there's a lot of variety in tone, but they're trying to just throw stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. But the thing that seems to come out of that, uh, that um, brouhaha has been Dave Filoni star Wars going forward. Right. And I think, I think this is a good point that, that for all of their, issues and storytelling gaps and whatever the prequels really are about something thoughtful and george lucas had stuff to say about the iraq war and peace and and negotiation and you know like it it really is this idea too of the jedi as you know the original trilogy sees them as like sort of perfect they're paragons of goodness and virtue and then the prequels introduce that idea that they've been really playing around with ever since of like, well, but there's another side to that. Like maybe the Jedi kind of messed up and got a little too into their own, you know, they got high on their own supply and they didn't notice the the Sith of what they were doing and they got tricked. And and uh, so I think all of that is there in the prequels and it is a through line and it is thoughtful and interesting. And it does make the prequels a lot better, especially Revenge of the Sith. And yeah, they're just not, they're just not doing that anymore. I mean, I guess the one thematic idea that runs through all of these shows is like, the new Republic sucks and is doing a bad job and is like their blindness is allowing the, the, the new order or whatever to form and Thrawn to get away with it. But it, 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 that's a really like, they kind of mention it a few times in every show. It's not really a strong 
narrative through line the way that yeah. the prequels had. What it seems to be is that they're setting up like an Avengers, I hate to say it, but like a big team up episode or series like the Defenders before them um, of like Mandalorian, Grogu, Boba Fett, Sabine Wren, Ahsoka. Like, no, they, they definitely are, right? I think Filoni's yeah. going to do a movie at some point where they bring all of this together. I'm assuming, but yeah. Yeah, and that to me is like going to like a water tasting. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, okay, all right. Well, uh, again, yeah, if you didn't do a good enough job of selling us on these characters in the first place, then putting, it's the, it's the Defender's lesson. Like, then putting them all together is like, oh, okay. Now they're all in one place. Yeah, and they're all um, together. All right. Yeah. Oh, well, wish we had more. Uh, wish we had better news for you guys. Wish we had more to, more to get the, excited about. I wish but... the dark universe had come together. Those are characters yeah. you want to see all get together. And there's your clue for next week is a founding Ooh. member of the dark universe mm, will be right. on screen uh, for next week's Honest Trailer. Um, and the hey. founding member of the dark universe. <laughs> yeah. The leading light of Universal's dark universe, really. <laughs> That's your clue. Uh, if you like to soak or not, this is a safe space to comment below and tell us what we missed or if you agree. Uh, and yeah, we'll be back running into action and hanging on for dear life uh, next week for Australia Commentaries. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.